today's lesson is about treatment for congenital hypothyroidism. The prevalence of congenital hypothyroidism is around 1 in 4,000 infants worldwide. And it is twice as many girls as boys are affected. And in most cases are not hereditary in the results from thyroid dysgenesis. If somebody asks you what is the most common symptoms of congenital hypothyroidism at birth, the answer is asymptomatic or no symptom at all. Because transplacental passage of moderate amount of maternal T4, so most infants with congenital hypothyroidism are asymptomatic at birth. Regarding the treatment of congenital hypothyroidism, levothyroxine given orally is a treatment for congenital hypothyroidism. Also, T3 is the biological active form of thyroid hormone. 80% of circulating T3 is derived from deiodination of circulating T4, and therefore, treatment with T4 alone restores normal serum levels of T4 and the T3. The recommended initial dose of L or levothyroxine is 10 to 50 microgram per kg per day, which is around 35 to 50 microgram per day for most term infants. And within this range, the starting dose can be adjusted based on the severity of hypothyroidism. Newborns with more severe hypothyroidism as judged by serum T4 less than 5 microgram per day and or imaging studies confirming aplasia should be started at higher end of the dosage. That means around 50 microgram per kg per day. Rapid normalization of thyroid function, ideally within two weeks, is important in achieving optimal neurodevelopmental outcome. Tablets should be crushed and mixed with small amount of fluid, around 1 to 2 ml. And levothyroxine tablets should not be mixed with milk, concentrated iron, or calcium because this can inhibit levothyroxine absorption. Also, it is recommended to administer levothyroxine on pity stomach and avoid food for up to 30 to 60 minutes. This is not practical in infant. So as much as possible, infant, we should have to give before food. As long as the method of administration is consistent, dosing can be adjusted based on serum thyroid test results to achieve the desired treatment goals. And levels of serum T4 or free T4 and the TSH should be monitored at recommended intervals. First, every one to two months in the first six months of life. Then every two to four months between six months to three years of age. The goals of treatment are to maintain serum TSH in the reference range for age and the serum free T4 and the total T4 in the upper half of reference range for age. Care should be taken to avoid overtreatment and undertreatment, both of which might be related to adverse neurodevelopmental outcomes, including decreased intelligence. About 35% of infants with congenital hypothyroidism and the normally located thyroid gland have transient disease and they do not require lifelong therapy. In patients who might have transient disease, a trial of discontinuation for four weeks might be undertaken after three years of age for three to four weeks to assess whether the TSH raises significantly, indicating the presence of permanent hypothyroidism. This is unnecessary in infants with proven thyroid dysgenesis or in those who have previously manifested elevated levels of TSH after 6 to 12 months of therapy because of poor medication adherence or inadequate dose of T4. This is all about treatment for congenital hypothyroidism. Thank you for watching.